stepping against Ramsey near Jim, considerable step up in opposition coming from Indianapolis. This is a way that people tend to get in the UFC now, but how did you feel about you know, taking that big step up in your career in a way that could lead you to ruin? Uh, I, did, I felt like it gave me another life. Uh, I was kind of just waiting for this. They kept telling us, you know, get a couple more quality fights. And so I, I've been fighting all year already. This, is, this would be my fifth fight. And when they called me, it felt, I was like, man, I feel like fighting now. I, I, was, I was excited. It's great. Is it tough? I think he's that yes, Is it tough trying to, you know, UFC matchmaker Joe Silva tells you, we need another couple fights, we want to see you do some more in Indianapolis. Is it tough now with the UFC and Bellator World Series of fighting, having so many fighters? It's hard for a prospect on the way up, you know, even in the Midwest, a hotbed, it's tough for someone to get like an ultimate fighter veteran or something like that, the kind of opponent you could make your name on. How tough was it trying to get to the UFC, just fighting whoever you could in the Midwest? It was a little tough, you know, there was a few times that we were like, yeah, this is going to be a good opponent, this should, this should look real good, and it falls out, we got to work out another opponent, so kind of get a little discouraged about this, just like, man, I, I'm, I'm hoping to get this next step, but with, like you said, there's so many guys, especially at my weight class, at 155, there's, I mean, it, there's a ton, I, I, I couldn't even, more people than I could ever even count that high, <laughs> but it, um, just kept doing it, we just kept going until... We got that call, and that's just what you wait for. Joe Rogan was forced to awkwardly ask you the question in the cage after the fight if you thought you won or not. The vast majority of me media seemed to have a 29-28 for Ramsey Nijim at least. Talk to me about the third round. That really seemed to be the decisive round for a lot of people. In the third round, you guys came up guns a-blazing, and then it basically turned into a grappling match after. As it proceeded, did you have a sense that you know you felt like you were winning or ahead? Did you feel like you had to get something together late? Talk to me about the last five minutes and kind of what was going through your head uh, respective to where the scoring might have been at that point. Uh, going into it, you know, I I always like to have the mindset that I'm down. I have to go out there and do what I have to do to win, no matter what. Uh, we we kind of thought it was a one and one, and I felt like, yeah, he did get the takedown. At the same time, I was always constantly going for something. You know, I'm going for the knee bars, I'm going for the heel hooks, I'm going for the corners, the arm bars. And I'm I'm constantly trying to do something, and he was he was just really just trying to hold me down. I felt it at one point that he was just just sitting there, and you know it. He probably felt like he did enough to win. At the same time, I felt like I was doing enough to give myself that victory. Prior to this, I mean, you waxed everyone you fought, nine submissions, one knockout. You hadn't been to the, the cards in this way. Is it difficult now, having done it, being the guy who maybe wins a, a decision that people don't respect? Because, I mean, it's not your fault. You went out, you fought your fight on a week's notice. It's on the judges, it's not on you. But when you talk about this win, everyone will essentially say, you know, you really think you won, guy? Yeah, everybody's, no matter what, uh, it, it, anytime there's a split decision, mainly, uh, people are going to ask that question. You know, uh, they don't like it, whatever. <laughs> they don't like it, I'm happy with it. It, uh, it feels good. I'm, you know, I, I pretty much give them the same thing. I, we fought. That's what you go, you go out there and fight. And if it goes to the judges, you just never know what's going to happen. So, there they happen. He was right there in your corner, so maybe not the biggest surprise in the world. Can you talk about... To, it, it, to any extent at all, if you pattern yourself on Chris Lytle, because seeing you come up through the Midwest, your submission game is very obvious, but Lytle was always a guy that, in spite of how awesome his submissions were, how cracky he was on the ground, liked to duke it out a bit, and you really indulged Ramsey in the kind of fight that he wanted on the feet. You slung leather with him in the first round, early in the third round. Do you see yourself in a Lytle mold at all? Is it a conscious thing, or does maybe it just kind of rub off in some way? You know, uh, two things with it. Uh, you know, obviously I spar with him a lot. I've been sparring with him a lot over the years. You kind of do take in a little bit of how his style is. At the same time, he came up doing boxing and he, you know, he wrestled back in schools and stuff like that. So we, we tried to go that way. I've had, as an amateur, you know, I did boxing matches. I did kickboxing matches, you know. So we try to follow his, his footsteps type deal. And I, if I can be anything like him, I'll, I'll be happy. Well, to that end, can you talk about your coach, Pat McPherson? Obviously, for a long period of time, quality fighters have been turned out at uh, any boxing grappling, but not a lot of people necessarily know his name or associate him with talent coming out of the area. Why do you think that is, and is it important to you at all, maybe, for him, for Lyle to try to put your gym on the map? Yeah, I got yeah, everything I know, man. He, he's he's taught me so much. Uh, if you don't know the name, it's Patrick McPherson. Get get used to hearing that name. Uh, hopefully, I'll be staying around. We'll get hopefully we'll get a couple more guys to come up and really put a name behind it. I mean. If you don't know him, I'm, it's ridiculous because we've got a lot of guys that are been through the UFC, if not still in. You know, obviously me, and there's another guy. That, you know, he he still fights with us and stuff like that. It's just get used to it.